Thank you so much for streaming our latest message from First Baptist Church. Here at FBC, our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. We do that by thinking big, thinking small, thinking in, and thinking out. We hope that this message helps you as you continue to grow in your faith. If you would like to stay connected to FBC, you can visit our website at fbcloyd.ca, look us up on Facebook and Instagram, or download our free mobile app. Now here's the latest from FBC. Enjoy. <clears throat> I, um, I'm excited. And I don't think you know why. You're thinking, right, it's like three sleeps to Christmas. Doug's excited about that. Well, that's good. But I'm more excited because it's December 22nd. And you know what that means. It means the days are getting longer. <laughs> you know? You know you're getting old when Christmas gets you a little ramped up, but an extra couple minutes of daylight gets you pumped, you know? Huh. I, I look forward to December 22nd every year. It's just awesome. Like, God's so good, right? You know, like, I mean, there's Christmas, and then on top of it, he throws in a start for more daylight. That's beautiful. More heat. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Like I said earlier, we're in uh, a series that we called the Original Christmas Playlist. And, um, you know, if you're like me, you know, again this year, it just seems to me that as we look around at our world out there, we see at the very least a, a season that's sort of in search of a reason. You know, um, somehow... Christmas seems to be for hire. All the different interest groups out there started to sort of try to capitalize on it and leverage it for their purposes. There's all these competing thoughts and ideas and interests. You know, the whole idea of peace is huge. And so there's groups and elements that are trying to leverage the whole idea of peace at Christmas. There's other groups out there that are, you know, focusing on family, relationships, Christmas is all about relationship. And they're trying to leverage it for that, those thoughts and, and opinions and, and perspectives. There's groups out there that are leveraging it for charity. This is the time of year to give. You know, engage with us in giving. It's better to give than to receive. And all those things are important. They're great things. But they just seem to continue to leave us just a little bit lacking. You know, I think that there's a sense still in the world around us that Christmas really means something, that, that somewhere deep inside of it, there's even a hope that Christmas is somehow going to be life-changing. That somehow... There's something intrinsic and foundational to it. But they keep missing it. They can't put their finger on it. And I think like in so many ways, as we look around at the world, we see that we've lost our way. We want Christmas to have purpose. We want it to be significant, even monumental. We want it to be life-changing. And we're doing all that our impoverished little souls can do to muster that up at Christmas time. But we keep falling just a little bit short. So here again, as with so many other things in life as we encounter it and understand it today, I would suggest that we need to quit trying to build it into something on our own that it's time for us to give up trying to manufacture it according to what we think and we know is best. And rather, that we would go back to what it is. 
And that's what this series is all about as we look at the original Christmas playlist, as we hear from people there at the time that testify to us today as to what Christmas is and what it's all about. And as we do that, I'm convinced, I believe with on, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that we will find again that Christmas is significant and that our world will come to see it as monumental and life-changing. And so this morning, as the next step in that process in this series, we're going to look at the angel song and what the angels tell us about Christmas. But before we dive in, one more time, would you bow your heads and pray with me as we ask God to work today. Father, today again, once more, just before we get to the message this morning, I pray that by your Spirit that you would come now and that you would open eyes and hearts and minds, that you would work in our lives in such a way that we would know your presence, that we would understand your intent, that we would recognize now our mission and our response to you in terms of what you've done through Christmas. God, that you would help us to internalize it within ourselves in such a way that then, that we would externalize it to the world around us. That we would be bold to go out and add our voices to the song of what Christmas is all about. And Father, I pray these things again in your Son's name and for his sake alone. Amen. All right. Now that I can't see again, let's begin. Um, if you turn with me in your Bibles, we're going to turn to Luke chapter 2, the Christmas story. And we're going to join it partway through just for the sake of time. So let me remind you, if you're not familiar or if just so you see where we're going to catch up, um, Mary and Joseph have headed out to Bethlehem. They are going down there because the sense had been, a census has been called. And they, so they've left Nazareth and they're heading down to, to Bethlehem so that they could be counted in this census as, as was required in, by the law. And while they are there, then Mary gives birth to Jesus. And so we'll pick it up then from verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Now, verse 14 is known as the Gloria in Excelsis Deo, or sometimes just referred to as the Gloria. It is also sometimes referred to as the higher doxology. Maybe you're familiar with it in, in that term. And sometimes it's also referred to as the hymn of the angels or the angel's song. And so it's here on verse 14 that we are going to focus our attention this morning. And as we come to this piece of scripture, as we come to the Christmas story, I think oftentimes that our attention is usually focused on the preceding verses because they deal with the birth of Christ. And we recognize that the, the birth of Christ is the focus, that that's the, whole, the, the pinnacle of what's going on here. And so we focus our attention there and therefore... I think sometimes as we come to verse 14, then we often understand it as sort of this postscript, if you will, sort of a celebratory addendum 
on account of what has preceded it. And we gloss over it on that basis. Or we come to verse 14 and we limit its significance to the miraculous appearing of angels, that the supernatural event occurred in light of Christ's birth. And it was sent there to mark the occasion of Christ's birth. And so we see it as this miraculous event that marks the occasion of Christ's birth. Again, the focus. And sometimes, I think we come to this short two-line verse, and we see it simply as an expression of praise to God. That again, in light of Christ's birth, that then we praise God for that. And this morning, we need to understand that it is more than just a statement of celebration. And it is far more than an event just marking, a miraculous event just marking the birth of Christ. And it is more too than simply praise to God. It is every bit all of those things, each of those things. But it goes well beyond that today. This short little verse, this angel's song, is an announcement, more even. It's a declaration of the initiator, the impact, and the scope of Christ's birth. The angels are speaking as to how this event has come about. And what's more, what has occurred in the birth of Christ? That is, what they're saying is, what has been and is being accomplished is addressed in this, these two lines. So this morning, as the angels then testify to the truth of the birth of Christ, then we can sit and listen and learn from them today. And the first thing that we learn then is that glory is given to God in the highest. Glory is ascribed to God in the highest heaven. The angels testify to the fact that what has just transpired is on account of God the Father. All right? Jesus the Savior has been born, absolutely. But the origin of this event is found in God the Father in the highest heaven. And that's significant for us today. Galatians 4 verse 4 backs up the significance of this point when it's, where it says, Paul speaking here, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. As the angels come to us and say, glory to God in the highest heaven this morning, we understand that to mean that God the Father has initiated this event in the course of his plan to reach out to redeem his people. That from the outset of time, even before the outset of time, that God has had a plan by which he is coming to redeem his people who have been, who have been alienated from him. That this is not some random event that occurred. It's not even just a miraculous event. It's not some sort of an outlier, if you will, in the course of history. An anomaly but rather it is the next and most significant event in God's plan by which he is going to come to save people from our sin. This isn't random. This isn't happenstance. This is as the result of a loving God working out his plan to save you and me today. And as such, then we need to understand that there is an author to this who is working 
to an end. And the end is our redemption, yours and mine, a restored relationship with God today through his son, Jesus Christ. As a result, the angels look at this, and rightly so, they ascribe glory to God in the highest heaven for accomplishing his plan, for working it out, and we must as well. Next, given that this proclamation comes as a result of Christ's birth, Given that this proclamation of glory to God comes on account of the fact that Christ has been born, we recognize, number two, that the glory of God is revealed in Jesus. The angels herald this fact. Hebrews 1 verse 3 says this, The Son, that is Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Okay, now don't miss this this morning. The glory of God is revealed in Jesus Christ. And the the writer of Hebrews points us again, just alongside that he echoes the angels in pointing to the significance of this fact. The Son, Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. And after he had provided purification for his sins, for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. As we come to the angel's song this morning, we hear the angel's attestation that the baby, this baby of Bethlehem, is more than just a prophet today. That this baby of Bethlehem is more than just a great teacher today. That the baby of Bethlehem, that Jesus is God himself injected into our world, our context. He's not just a good teacher. He's not just a moral leader. He's not just somebody with some good ideas. The the, the world will sometimes recognize him as a good teacher. The world will sometimes acknowledge that he has some good ideas. The, The world will sometimes acknowledge that he has some great teachings that we could follow. But the world does not acknowledge him as God. And we have to do that today. It is up to us now, as we hear from the angels, that we go out into the world and recognize and share with them that this baby born in Bethlehem is God himself. Brought to us by the Father in order that he could then redeem us from our sin. We wonder sometimes where we find evidence that Jesus is God. I would point you to the angel's song as they testify to that fact. I would point you to Hebrews 1 verse 3 that substantiates that and corroborates that fact. Jesus is God himself come to earth. Don't miss it. Thirdly, the angels sing, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace. And from this statement, this declaration by the angels, we need to understand that number three, giving glory to God is a prerequisite to peace. Giving glory to God is a prerequisite to peace. Now, it's not hard 
to see the benefit and value in peace, is it? We see that. It's relatively straightforward and self-evident. I think we even desire it. We want peace. Sometimes we're even disposed to working towards it ourselves. We try and adjust in order to accomplish it. But what we fail to see so often, what we fail to recognize is that the path to peace goes directly through God himself. And that apart from him, there is no hope of accomplishing it otherwise. In general terms, we see peace in two respects, don't we? Internally, internal peace and external peace. Internal peace is that state where we are at rest within ourselves where we find ourselves free from anxiety, from fear, from depression, from stress, from anger. And we have rest within ourselves. External peace is where we are at rest with the external world around us. With other people, we're at peace with our neighbors, we're at peace with our families, we're at peace with even other nations in a larger geopolitical context. And our world values those things. But they are peddling all kinds of avenues and options in order to accomplish it, in order to find peace, in order to establish peace, accomplish peace, everything. Everything from meditation right through and up to and including a robust nuclear arsenal. You've got lots of options. Seems like there's lots of ways to accomplish peace as far as the world is concerned. In a nutshell, our problem is, is that we believe that the capacity for peace lies within ourselves. That we can accomplish it on our own. And I would even concede, even for the sake of argument this morning, To a certain extent, I believe that's true. We can muster up a little bit of peace, at least for a little while. But our problem is this. It does not last. And rarely does it ever go deep enough to accomplish anything for any substantial period of time. And that's because of this, that our lack of peace is on account of sin. Sin is responsible for the fact that we have no peace. And therefore, we have to recognize that the path to peace begins then with God and is extended to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.14 says, For he himself, he, Jesus, is our peace. So then, as we recognize God, as we acknowledge him, that he exists, that he reigns, that he is preeminent, And then as we understand his goodness to us in the gift to us of Jesus Christ. And as then we we confess the fact that we are not God. And in fact, even beyond that, far from that, that we are sinners. That we have violated God and his standards. And fallen far short of his glory, and then therefore place our trust in Jesus Christ and what he has done, then we begin to find true and lasting peace in our lives. Giving glory to God naturally results in peace. 
and until we give glory to God. All our attempts at peace internally and externally in our lives and in our world are pseudo attempts at peace at best. And then the angels announce it. They come and they lay it out for us. Glory to God in the highest heaven. And therefore then, on earth, peace. But not until then. Not until we acknowledge God and what he has done for us through his son. Fourthly this morning. We hear from the angels, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those. And we understand that God offers peace to everyone. This offer of peace from God himself is offered to you and to me today, to each one of us, everyone. Some translations say, the glory of God, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, Peace among men. The language used by the angel and as translated for us today in scripture means people in general. People corporately. Mankind as a whole. So this morning, hear from the angels that God is offering you peace today. You're not excluded. No one's excluded. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how big a sinner you might be. On the other side of the coin, I don't care how much you have done and how great of things that you've accomplished. This peace is offered to you today and to me today and to everyone today because we all are in need of it. And God says that he will withhold it from no one. It is a gift to each of us today. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Don't miss it. Hear the angels today. Offering you peace. This fact is substantiated in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The first gift of Christmas is for all of us. Fifthly, this morning, It says, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Still talking here about God. On whom his, on on whom God's favor rests. And from this, we understand that the gift of peace is on account of God only. Not of anything else. By us. Ephesians 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. God extends to us today peace by his favor alone, not our merit. It's the result of his good pleasure. Not anything that we deserve. How amazing is that? Does the good news get any better today? I say no. This trumps it. Hands down, that despite the fact that from the very outset that we have walked away from a loving God, thumbed our nose at him, turned to ourselves and said, we know better. 
and therefore brought upon ourselves the wrath of sin and death that comes as a result of it. God, by his favor alone, his goodness, we're going to talk about God's goodness in the new year and starting in January 5th. We're going to look at seeing God more clearly and how that will change our perspective of how we see the year ahead and life even beyond that. Don't miss it. We're going to start with the goodness of God on January 5th. I'm looking forward to it already. But on account of God's goodness alone, we can have restored relationship with him and life forever with him eternally. So, if you would, once more from the top. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom God's favor rests. And that is what Christmas is all about. And that's what makes it significant and monumental. And if you will today, it can be life-changing as you reach out and place your trust in God sent to us in Jesus Christ. I pray that you will not miss the good news of the angel's song this Christmas. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the gift of your Son. Thank you for your plan that you've been working out down through time to reach out and redeem us despite our sin and the way that we have walked and rebelled away from you. Thank you for his sacrifice for us, his willingness to come, and then his life laid down on our account, all out of your good favor. Father, I pray that we would understand that today, that we would recognize the significance of the gift offered to us in Jesus, and that we would respond, and Father, then that beyond that, that it wouldn't just be internal, but that that would then become external for us as well as we go out and share this good news with those that don't know yet. Please, Lord, don't let the angel's song fall on deaf ears. Open our hearts and our minds today. Change us for your son's sake. And I pray this now in Christ's name alone. Amen.